Gunner Nelson. Oh, God. Scrap okay, metal. We... Nelson, how's everything going, man? Everything is going great, man. It's going great. It's busy. All right. But busy's good. Cool, busy's cool. Busy's good. Cool, cool. Now, I was watching a video this morning of, uh, like, you going in hotel rooms and the cameras following you and stuff. Um, you know, you always seem like you're happy and, and you know, uh, obliging to, uh, you know, fans and stuff like that. I, I, is that the case? Oh, it totally is. Look, i got the greatest job in the world, but, you know, it's kind of been my family business for over 100 years. So <laughs> it's really no different than what I've always known. Seriously. Um, you know, I always say that doing what I do for a living we uh we actually are not getting paid for playing shows. It's not what we get paid for. We get paid for the travel. Right. You know, and it really it really does help me keep my head together and uh, my twin to get you know keep his head together. You know, we get paid for time away from family, um, for for the missed baseball games, for um, for flying on Super Bowl Sunday, right? Things like that. That that's what we get paid for. But it's a wonderful trade out. To be honest with you, because you know the only thing I've ever wanted to do my entire life was make music. Right, and here I am, all these years later, and I am I'm privileged to to be able to get to do that. It's right. not something I have to do; it's something I get to do. Yeah, yeah, you're lucky. To, one of the you know very few people that <clears throat> actually get to do something they love. Like I would say, more than fifty percent, uh, you know, are just doing it for the paycheck and they can't stand their job. But uh, you know, I, I guess you're one of the lucky Wait, ones. Yeah, uh, you know, it's really true. But I thought. I find that actually in music as well, and that's why I put scrap metal together in the first place. Because right. no matter who you are and what it is you do, it's very, very easy unless you're hyper vigilant for your groove to turn into a rut. Right. You know, you get good at something. Um, again, no matter what your job is, you get good at it. You plug into it. You have a certain amount of expertise, which gives you confidence. Um, that can easily turn into uh, that can easily turn into complacency. Over time, it's just something that you know you've always done. You're pretty good at it, but all the passion and the joy is really not in it anymore for you. It's just something that you do, right? Okay, and and when you're actually in a band, the same thing can apply. You can actually, even if you've had hits, let's say you go out there, you're playing the same set every night. A lot right. of bands I know from from back in the day, playing the same darn set every single night, same song, same order. And it becomes boring to them, and they never got into making music to have a job. Right. No one ever does that. They're they're making a uh, an, an antisocial statement by being in a band. They don't. They never wanted to have a gig. And then, next thing you know, if they're lucky, something takes off, and they got to play that song for the rest of their lives. So they better love it. They better <laughs> love doing that. So the question is, okay, how do you balance what it is you're good at doing, and still keep passion for? Uh, what what it is you do. I mean, how do you keep it fresh and new and exciting? And that was the, the genesis of scrap metal. The birth of that idea, it, it all came from sitting in a car next to Mark Slaughter talking about, you know, these sets that we've been playing in our respective bands for a certain amount of time. We love doing it. We love the songs we made. We're very proud of what we've done. There was a lot of hard work that went into it. Um, but wouldn't it be fun if... And we just played the what if game, and uh, there there have been some other people who tried to do something like that, but it always reached an impasse because they had come across uh, you know lead singer syndrome, egos, managers, record companies, uh, complacency, all of that stuff. And when we put scrap metal together, uh, basically it was a bunch of friends who were not only passionate still about their own music, but loved their friends' music too. I love Slaughter. I love Winger. I love Vixen. I love Night Ranger. I love Firehouse. I mean, I'm a fan. Right. And in this band, I get to be in their bands for the night. How cool is that? Oh, that's I mean, cool. As a guitar player, when I'm sitting up there and I'm doing the encore or something like that, and I got Jimmy Jameson with us that night, man, I'm playing Eye of the Tiger with Jimmy freaking Jameson. I'm in Survivor for the night playing that iconic song, and, and the audience is going nuts. Dude, that's a, that's awesome for me as a, as a not just as a musician, but as a fan. As a musician, it keeps things fresh. I'm learning new parts all the time, pushing the envelope for myself as a guitar player and as a singer and arranger. Uh, but, man, as a fan, man, this is really cool. It feels like I won, I've won, I've won the lottery every night. <laughs> wow, wow. Now, Scrap Metal is coming into New York City on February 8th at the Cutting Room. Uh, you know, Can you tell me anything about that? Any special things going to happen? Absolutely. Yeah, we're, we're actually playing at the Cutting Room. Uh, this Saturday coming up, uh, showtime for us is 10.30. It's an awesome cast. We've actually done this particular cast 
one time, and it was the best scrap metal show. With all due respect to my cast members, best best scrap metal show lineup so far. It's uh, Mark Slaughter from Slaughter, Janet Gardner from Vixen, the Brothers Nelson from Nelson, and Kelly Keggy from Night Ranger. Cool. And uh, like I said, we're playing at the cutting room, 1030. Um, normally, this is an event band. This is an arena band. We've never played something as uh, as intimate as a rock club like the cutting room before. Uh, the smallest room we've ever played has been at the Mohegan Sun. Right. So this is going to be a rare opportunity to see this band up close and personal. And, uh, man, if you're brave enough, leave the earplugs at home because you're going to be right next to the Marshalls. Wow. I was just there about two weeks ago, and, and anybody who gets to go, this is so intimate. I mean... I mean, you're that close to you. A any spot in this house is perfection. You, you, even they got a little balcony. I mean, even the balcony hangs over almost the stage. It, it's <laughs> a, a phenomenal. It's a phenomenal club. I mean, like you know, I had you know the first little table right in front of uh, another band, and I mean, like their foot was like in my face. That's you how felt like you were in the freaking band. I yes. know, man. I yes. know. I know. Well, you're going to feel even more like that because what makes scrap metal so unique is it's all killer, no filler. We don't play album cuts, man. Every, every, every band that's up there that's represented by their lead singer, by their front person, uh, has four or five major top 40 hits that you know all the words to. Right. So if you put that into one set, what you've got is nothing but your, your, you know, your favorite 80s metal hit parade sung by the original lead singers, and you know all the words to them, and you like all these songs. Cool, cool, cool. Now, when you're in New York, are, are you plan on anything uh, special, like, uh, you know, going to different places since you're in New York City now? Oh, uh, you know, I always, there are certain places that I, I try to get to, you know, um, when, I'm, when I'm out there. On this particular trip, though, uh, I'm probably going to have to send uh, my, my guests, my cast members, and my crew out, because in scrap metal, I am uh, I am the chief, uh, the resident cat herder. That's what I do. I'm the mother hen. Right. I'm the guy that makes sure that everything flows smoothly. And uh, and so a lot of my time is actually going to be spent making sure the flights are right. Everyone gets into their hotel rooms. Rehearsal goes great. Setup of the gear is awesome. But if something's wrong with the the amp head on stage left, it gets replaced, and everything goes great. But everybody's, everybody else is probably going to be doing some sightseeing and stuff. And, and we all have great friends in New York City. Everybody does. Cool. So they're probably going to be spending some time visiting and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, when 1030 rolls around, it's going to be one big party at the cutting room. Great, great. Will you be bringing any kind of merchandise? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, everybody brings merchandise from their own respective bands. Right. And, uh, and I'm actually, uh, we've got scrap metal T-shirts and stuff like that. This is a trip that is actively building right now as we speak. Uh, we've, been, we've been building this up for the last four years, but uh, we just got signed to a new management company, Kevin Lee, who used to manage uh, Candlebox, cool. uh, is that actually managing the band right now. We're really, really excited for what he's bringing to the table already. We're actually putting a project together called Scrap Metal, Big in Japan. Wow. And we're actually going to uh, go, to, go to try to actually uh, film the band putting on a, a show at the Budokan over in Tokyo. So... Uh, that's what we're working on right now. This is going to be one of the last opportunities to, to see this band uh, that up close and personal. Cool, cool, cool. Do you still get pleasure in, like, signing autographs and, you know, things like that? It depends. Right. It, de it depends. If, if the fans are cool, I love visiting. I love that. Right. And, you know, kind of one, one of the, uh, the, the, the byproducts of that is every now and again you get a jerk that comes up and tries to say something rude or tries to be funny, maybe they're nervous or whatever, maybe they're just an ass. Right. Um, and, and in moments like that, no, I don't like signing autographs. But I love people. Right. I just don't like jerks. Yeah, you know? I the, pro the problem is, you know, my family, the Nelson family, is from Jersey. Wow. So, so we don't have, uh, you know, a whole lot of patience for, <laughs> for people who are trying to be tools. You know what I mean? Right, yeah. yeah. And, and that's, that's one of those things. My, my brother... God bless Matthew. He's so sweet. He's the family Kissinger. Uh -huh. We send Matthew in when peace needs to be made. Right. You know, I'm the, I'm the hammer. Wow. So it's kind of one of those things I'm, I'm learning. But, you know, I've got to be honest with you, man. It is really, really difficult to have anything other than a fantastic attitude right. with a scrap metal show with everything around it. Wow. Because, honestly, this was put together because it's freaking fun. And it not only connects all of us, 
with why we started making music in the first place, but as fans, why we started listening to music in the first place. Dude, we were, play- we were making music back in the day when chicks wore lingerie to shows. Wow. I'm not talking under their clothes. I'm <laughs> talking just lingerie. Wow. Okay? Uh-huh. And that's kind of the attitude that we have now. You know, you go out there and you have nothing but a good time. It's nothing but fun. And it's confident. And it's passionate. And it's fun. And it's, you know, it's, I mean, these guitar players, have you heard of the guitar players we're bringing to this particular show? Wow, no. We got Howie Simon from Alcatraz. Wow. And we've got Joel Holkstra from Night Ranger. I mean, this is going to be a wire choir set on stun. You know, it's going to be great. It's going to be a front line. There's going to be four flying Vs in the front line of this, of this thing on a very small stage, which is so excessive, I couldn't think of anything better for scrap metal. Oh, that sounds awesome. I can't wait to go. I'm going. All right, on. I'll be there, you know. <laughs> and uh, I, I, too, I, I am. I am. I'm, I'm definitely going, you know. So, um, you know, congratulations. Do you ever think scrap metal will ever put out, like, um, say, I know you all play your, your favorite songs, but put out a disc maybe of some new stuff maybe yeah there are two things that we're planning on doing and that's a great question you know see the, the question that we ask ourselves is okay uh the whole the whole concept of scrap metal is playing the hits nothing but the hits right right so is there a market out there do people want fans of our bands fans of ours do they want to hear new stuff well i mean it's kind of a yes and kind of a no they really want to feel comfortable with the stuff that they love because it connects them with that time in their lives when they felt 10 feet tall and bulletproof right but you know we also again because of you know wanting to mix things up we don't want to grow complacent because even in within scrap metal this can become boring if we're not careful right so making new music would be great so with uh, kevin lee the new manager we are talking about doing two things one yes we will be putting out a new scrap metal single to start Cool. And then doing a scrap metal album. But we're also going to do a whole line of scrap metal albums. Now imagine this. Imagine your favorite lead singers from your favorite rock bands singing the top hits that their friends made popular back in the day. Wow, that's excellent. So, yeah, so for example, um, you know, you, you'd have, um, uh, let's say, Kip Winger singing Every Rose Has Its Thorn. You'd have Mark Slaughter um, singing... Uh, uh, gosh, uh, a Scorpion classic, so on and so forth. So it's your favorite singers from the era singing your favorite songs from the era to something they wouldn't have normally done themselves. Wow. Wow. That, that, that's a gold platinum album right there. We're, saying, we're trying, man. You know, that's... We're trying. We're trying to mix it up. We're just trying to do things, man, that we would want to hear and play, play shows that we would want to see. It's really simple. Right. You know, and, and pull out all the stops. And again, what's great about this is, man, there are no rules right now. All these bands that we're pulling our cast members from, multi-multi-platinum acts, out on tour, doing their thing. And you know, what happens is when they hit one out of the park and they go on tour, they start employing tons of crew members, tons of people. They've got people depending on them, promoters, managers, agents, press people, all of that stuff. And the pressure is so high right. that it, it makes it impossible for, for you to... Uh, to really go outside of the dots and do new things because the focus is get the gig done. Okay. Tomorrow do the next gig and you're on a treadmill. You know, you basically get on the hamster wheel and you're stuck there and you wake up 20 years later and you go, well, great. We got the gig done. We got this whole line of gigs done. Everybody made money. That's great. But am I happy? Right. Do I feel really fulfilled? And and granted it beats having a job uh, in a cubicle. Not that there's anything wrong with it, but none of us got into this line of work because that's who we were. Right, yeah. And this actually is really cool because and every scenario is different. Every every cast is different. Every uh, every set list is different. So it keeps it fresh not just for the fans but for us as well. Cool. And it takes us out of our comfort zone. And it's kind of one of these weird things, man. We've, we've got to be masochists because we actually now have become – we've started looking forward to being out of our comfort zone, to having to learn the new material, getting it note for note perfect, and doing it on a, on a timeline, uh, you know, on a, on, a, a, on a strict time constraint, and pulling it off like it's uh, a show that we've played a hundred times. Because that's what it comes across. I mean, if you look at us up on YouTube, I mean, shoot, when, uh, when you see Eric Martin uh, singing Daddy, Daddy, Brother, Lover, Little Boy, right. it looks like we play that song with him every single night and have been on tour with him for 10 years. Right. That was the first time we ever played that song. Wow. 
sounds so cool, so cool. Oh, man, you got a dream come true there, you know? So. Oh, oh no, I, I love it, man. I love my job. It's, um, it's, it's. I mean, I'm, I'm here at my age, still making music, wow. still having a blast doing it. Cool, cool. And uh, man, I, I honestly, I feel so lucky wow. to be doing it. Um, life's good. Great, great, great. Gunner Nelson, Scrap Metal Nelson. Thanks very much for giving us a call today. And uh, would you like to say anything to the fans out there? I just want to tell everybody, after all of these years, I really appreciate all of the fans, all of the support, and all of the cast members in Scrap Metal. You name it, man. The, the list is about 25 strong and growing. What we all have in common is that, that we love what we do, and we couldn't do what we do without the support of the fans. I mean, no bullshit. We, we love the fans. So let us give something back. Allow us to provide you with shows that uh, you wouldn't normally get to see. And, uh, and, and let us all join in the moment where we're all packed, you know, tapped into uh, feeling 10 feet tall and bulletproof. Cool, cool. Thanks a lot, man. I appreciate it. Well, thank you for the support, brother. See you at the show.